All right, time for tips, tricks, and resources to make your life doing world completions easier. If you don't know about any of these, be prepared to speed up your exploration efforts tenfold. And even if you know a lot of them, you can probably still cut your time spent in half while playing at a casual pace. Let's start with the absolute best thing you can do to start exploring the world more efficiently. And that's installing Blishhut and enabling their pathing module. This will allow the add-on to overlay routes made by other creators on your screen. In the video, I'm using Test Trails, which frankly is the gold standard when it comes to speed. Their routes also contain a ton of tips and tricks on how to complete hearts faster, which mounts to use when, and so on. The main downsides for some players might be that the route flows better with mounts, although it's still doable without. And it'll involve quite a bit of teleporting all around the map. If you prefer having a closed loop to follow around instead of teleporting, then I would advise you to use either tickets or reactives routes. You can install the latter either in English or in French if that is something that matters to you. Tickets routes often feature a mount route as well as a barefoot one, in case you don't have any of the mounts yet. And I would call reactives routes the more scenic version and maybe the most beginner friendly. Although both are great if you're totally new or you don't want to use teleports because your computer loads the map too slow. With this, I also want to shout out all four of the creators. Blishhut is probably the best quality of life add-on this game has ever seen. And the work the respective people have put into creating these routes should be applauded. They're the real heroes of this video, not me. You can find a link to all of their stuff in the description of this video. Alright, now onto some tips and tricks. You can do world exploration starting at level 1 and you'll do just fine. If you're a newer player, this is probably the way to go. If you've done multiple or maybe even dozens of map completions, you might want to start to optimize things a little. I would highly recommend getting your character to level 80 and unlocking two builds. A power build for taking care of enemies quickly and a build that can stack a ton of conditions in a short time. You'll want a ladder for any heart that requires you talking to NPCs to turn them hostile. If you stack conditions on them, these conditions will continue ticking even when the NPC turns friendly again. And every time their health gets reduced to zero, even when friendly, you'll get free progress to complete the heart faster. There are multiple ways to get your character to 80 quickly. Unless you have a level 80 boost lying around, don't spend your gems on one in the store. It's actually much cheaper in terms of gold, and especially in real money spent, to simply level your character to 80 through crafting. The cheapest disciplines you can pick up will always be cooking and jewel crafting, but you'll probably need 2 or 3 more to get to 80. I highly recommend using GW2 Crafts for this process, as they list the cost of leveling as well as the best recipes to use. And if you enter your API key, they can even let you know what you need to buy based on the items you already have in your storage. Another way to quickly gain some levels are the birthday boosters. These rarely get you to 80, but they can quickly bump you up quite a few levels, making the crafting methods above even cheaper. If real efficiency is of concern, the best way will be to stockpile tomes of experience. Each will grant you a level, so you'll need 80 total for max level. And you can now buy 35 of them for 8 astral acclaim each from the wizard's fault. These tomes will also offer you a way to skip the introduction questline when you're making a new character. ArenaNet prevents the use of teleporting out of the starter zone unless you reach level 2. But if you have the tomes of experience in your shared inventory slot, you can still pop them in the starter zone and teleport straight out. If you have world v world currency saved up, the very first thing you want to do is go to the vendor that will sell you notarized scrolls of Central Tyria exploration. You will need to do 189 hero points for Central Tyria map completion and these scrolls allow you to skip all of them except for one. The one that you need to do the old fashioned way is somewhat random. I'm not sure why it is this way, but that's what we're dealing with. These scrolls will save you an immense amount of time to get your gift of exploration. Let's say completing a hero point takes around a minute, including the time spent traveling to and from. 189 of those means you'll spend around 180 minutes or 3 hours total of your map completion simply doing hero points. Even if you do them in half the time, that's still an hour and a half less of map completion to do. So if there's only one thing you want to take away from this guide, well, maybe apart from Blishhut, it should be this. Especially if you plan on doing multiple map completions and you don't mind the occasional bit of World v World, which you'll have to do for Gifts of Battle anyway if you want to craft your own legendary weapons. There's a few items you can get to speed up map completions as well. 
If you follow test trails, I would highly recommend you go and buy the prototype position rewinder from the Heart Fender in the Sandswept Isles, which is part of Living World Season 4. This item will allow you to save your position by using it and teleport back to that location for about 30 seconds. It'll cost you 75 difluoride crystals and 175,000 karma. And trust me, it's definitely worth it. You can also use this for jumping puzzles and you'll be able to rewind to your position if you happen to miss a jump. If you have the Executioner Axe toy, there's a Harding Caledon Forest that will make use of this in test guides as well. There are a few other cool tricks you can do with this item, as it'll make you run incredibly fast if you're also under the effects of super speed, and it can be used in dungeons and fractals. There is also a Choya Piñata tonic from the casino event in Path of Fire that will allow you to do the same thing in dungeons. So I don't particularly recommend to spend your gems just to speed up one heart. Longtime viewers of my channel will probably remember those two gold making guides I posted about special roots and crab meat which kinda tanked the price for both on the trading posts and I'm kinda sorry about it, but not because now it's cheaper to do quick map completion. Well, there are 20 items in total you can buy from the trading post that will instantly complete one of the hearts in the open world. If speed is all you care about, buy all 20 of them. If gold is of concern, there are a few that are rather expensive, so just focus on the cheap ones. All 20 of them are mentioned in test trails as well. The thing you'll spend most time on is completing hearts. I already mentioned the trick with the condition builds for NPCs that will turn hostile. Another trick is when you need to interact with items. When interacting, you'll see a progress bar and you'll most likely be inclined to wait it out till that progress bar is complete. Well, interacting with objects for hearts usually rewards the progress the moment you interact with them, not when completing the cast bar. So if you're smashing spider eggs, activating levers or something else, interact with them and instantly weapon swap. This will interrupt the cast bar, but still give you the progress. This might not seem like much, but of the 303 hearts you need to complete, quite a few will be sped up with this trick. And a final trick, which is once more part of test trails, is to not instantly equip your characters with tons of backspace. There are quite a few hearts in the world that you can complete by picking up items, but if you have a full back, you still get a heart's progress without the item disappearing. So some of the hearts will turn into spamming the interact key for a few seconds instead of spending a couple of minutes running around. There are tons more of hard specific tricks for which I'll eventually make a video by zone, but Test Trails does a better job at covering them than I ever could in a video. That's hero points and hearts out of the way. You might be thinking we're done now, because the rest is teleports, points of interest and vistas. Well, not quite. Mons in Guild Wars 2 are so straightforward to use, it might be easy to overlook some of the things you can do with them. The absolute fastest ground mount is the roller beetle. If you're wary of using yours because all you seem to do is crash into a wall or a tree, start using them on simple straight paths. Eventually you'll get a hang of turning with them or even drifting around the corner. An easier to use and the second fastest option would be the raptor. Their jump allows you to cover gaps and distances quite comfortably, you can group up mobs with them and I would say their main disadvantage is turning corners as they need quite a wide arc. Sky skills are of course the masters of elevation, and their barrel roll will still allow you to cover distances quite nicely. You might prefer a sky skill over a raptor when you're covering terrain that is littered with obstacles. Griffins are the masters of aerial speed, and make sure you use the dive button if you run no risk of crashing into the ground for an even crazier speed boost. If you want to see what a true griffin master looks like, go and check out Willow's channel. She runs an academy guild that will teach you how to fly better. The skimmer will be your mount of choice when traversing bodies of water. And if you haven't yet, go and do the achievement in Lion's Arch that will allow you to use the skimmer underwater. The last two mounts are probably the most underappreciated of the bunch. Let's start with the Springer. If you have a sky skill, you might be inclined to neglect using your Springer. But there's three good reasons not to. First of all, you can Springer jump, dismount and swap to a Griffin to start flying with more elevation. Secondly, their cannonball does great break bar damage. But you probably knew both of those. The real trick for fast world completion with a Springer has to do with the endurance region. See, if you're using your roller beetle and you came to a sudden stop because you ran into a wall or a tree, you want to swap to your Springer as its endurance region is one of the fastest in the game. When the bar is full, swap back to your roller beetle and you can speed boost straight away instead of having to wait for the beetle's slower region. 
And finally, we have the Jackal. People who use this mount frequently probably know it's easier to navigate in tight spaces such as indoors or in caves. It can turn sharp corners and its teleportability won't get you stuck in a ceiling like the Raptor or Skyscale tend to do. But again, there's a bit of an obscure mechanic to their teleportability. If you need to run up an incline, this is actually the fastest mount to do so. Their teleport skill isn't affected by uphill terrain and doesn't slow you down like it would a raptor or a sky scale. So if you need to run uphill, swap to your jackal from now on. And finally, make sure you're still having fun. These tips and tricks will help you speed up world completion, but they're useless if you don't have fun playing the game. So if one of the map packs isn't doing it for you, try one of the others. Throughout the years of playing, I've tried all three, and to this day, I still swap around occasionally. I do a ton of world completions every year, and when I don't feel like it, I simply take a break. There's other things this game has to offer, and it'd be a real shame to neglect that. If you have any other comments or questions, feel free to list them down below, and hit those like and subscribe buttons while you're at it.